topic we discussed on anyone so we started with the introduction right so we discussed about the introduction to cyber security right and we started the network fundamentals right so in that we discussed about the computer networks computer networks and uh, its types right so network and importance of cs yes exactly yes types of so today we are going with the network topologies so today we are going to discuss about the network topologies here so can anyone tell me what is this network topologies and why it is important anyone hmm? any idea so actually here the word topology is nothing but a structure or you can say this as an arrangement or a pattern also you can say so where network topology describes the arrangement of networks here so arrangements of a network here and the relative location of traffic flows right so why is network topology is important is that necessary to know the arrangement of a network here is that mandatory for us to know hmm? yes how devices connected through network and how they share information with each other great so here network topologies can be in two pattern bases one is physical arrangement of a network and logical arrangement of a network so a network topology is the physical and logical arrangement of a nodes and connections in a network so nodes usually includes devices here the word node being we include here so I, usually these nodes are nothing but the devices so it may be a switch it may be a router it may be a software it may be anything within the switch and the router features the software so that comes under the node point okay so network topologies often represented as a graph here and why it is important in the sense obviously it plays a major role in how network functions how your network functions to know how your network is functioning it's mandatory to know about the network topologies so the topology has a direct effect on network functionality so choosing the right topology can increase the performance and maintain the network uh, topology increases energy efficiency and data transfer rate also okay so it's very important to know how the network is functioning in the organization accordingly it is easy for the network administrators to analyze how the data flows in that network and where uh, the trouble has occurred it's easy to troubleshoot the network also right so easily they can uh, locate the faults they can troubleshoot the issues and even to locate the network resources also okay so now we'll go with the different topologies okay so we have total five to six topologies here right so the five to six topologies are So first we have a bus topology, then we have a ring topology. The major topologies are fine actually, apart from that you have many more, okay. Then we have a star, then we have a uh, mesh, then we have the combination of all this which is hybrid and then we have a point to point or P2P topology 
and then we have tree topologies like that there are many topologies you can see right and we are going to discuss about each and every topology means how the topologies will work and how the topology connects the node node points and how the data flows so here what is physical topology and what is logical topology anyone what physical represents and what logical represents anyone any idea so these are the topologies which we have okay so here you can see so topology is nothing but arrangement so how the network is configured in a organization so to know that we are looking for the network topologies in that we have uh, two arrangement patterns one is physical and one is logical so physical is nothing but how the devices are connected to each node right Can you please explain slowly? Am I good? Am I going very fast? Or? All right. So network topology is nothing but here. It's an arrangement of a network. Okay. So in this, we have different types of topologies. Okay. So bus topology, ring topology, star, mesh, hybrid, point to point, and tree topology. These are the different topologies which we have. And these topologies will represent the physical arrangement and logical arrangement of a network. Means how the devices are connected in that network and how the data flows to one device to another device. Means the connection point means the physical medium. It may be a wired or wireless that represents the physical, physical connection of a network. That is what physical topology do. And in that network, how the data flows there is what logical will take care. So physical topology is nothing but here. How the devices are connected to each other in that network, the physical way, the cables or wireless scenarios, and how the data flows in that will represent the logical topology. Is that clear, everyone? So here network topologies is nothing but it's a structure of a network of how all the components are interconnected to each other. Okay, means how the devices are connected to each other and how the data flows in that network will be represented by these network topology. And there are uh, two types of arrangements of topology. One is physical and one is logical. So where physical topology will explain you how the devices are connected to each other in that network and where logical topology represents how the data is flowing in that network from one device to another device. That is what logical. Clear? Simple. Physical topology is the geometric representation of all the nodes in a network. And logical topology, how the data is flowing in that network will represent you. Clear everyone? The physical and logical. Right. Simple. Physical is nothing but the connection. Logical is nothing but in that connection how the data is flowing. Right. So we are going to see each and every topology in detail now. Okay, we'll see how bus topology works, right? So we'll go each and every topology and see how they works. So first, let me go with the bus topology. So in bus topology, uh, let me check, is there any diagram? Draw that. Okay. Mm. So this is the structure of a, a bus topology. So this is the a physical structure of a bus topology for you. So if you observe, in this, we have a, a cable, a straight line cable. Can you see this? This one. So this is a backbone cable we call. Okay. Just a second. Right. Uh, 
all the devices are connected to a single cable exactly so here there will be a backbone cable for you so to this cable all the devices will be connected so here each node is either connected to the backbone cable by a draw cable or directly connected to the backbone cable so when a node wants to this is the connection this is how the physical topology of a bus now we'll discuss about logic means how the data flows in this for example imagine this is a system a and there is system b and this is system c d and e imagine there are five devices which we have in this network now a wants to send the data to e a wants to send the data to e how the data flows here will it directly send the data to e will it go directly no actually first what it will do is it will send to the next node from there to the next node so that's how the data flows from one node to another node and reach the destination based on the address you know the addresses which is ip address mac address port address all these things so using those services it will use this uh, means it will send the data that is how the data flows here so imagine there is a data and there is a connection between a and e and they are communicating each other at the same time at the same time, means there is a communication going with between A and E. They are sharing some resources. At the same time, B wants to send the data to D. Will it send the data here? Will it send the data at the time? Is that possible? Actually, no. Why? Because the cable is busy here. The cable is busy. A and E is communicating, right? So at the same time, you can't send the data here. So if you try to send the data, what happened here? Collision. There will be a collision here. So the main, the, the disadvantage of bus topology is you can't communicate simultaneously. Here, one after the other only. So when a node wants to send a message over the network, it puts a message over the network and all the stations available in that network will receive the message whether it has been addressed or not, they will receive and they'll forward to the destination. Got it? And if they want to send the data at the time, means already there is a communication at the same time, B wants to send the data to D, it won't happen because the, the cable is busy. It's having some traffic here. So once it's done the process, then only they can able to send the data. Means here, simultaneously, two connections can't be work here two devices can't be communicated all right so one after the other means a and e is communication done then only b and d can be communicated here got it is it clear everyone how the data is flowing right so how how it knows there is a traffic is going on and how it knows the transmission has been done hmm? So for that, they implemented a carrier sense me uh, like media access. Carrier sense a media access control will be used. So what is the use of this carrier sense control uh, is used? So it is used to control the data flow so that the integrity is maintained means the changes won't be happen there so it maintains the integrity at integrity is maintained that means the packet do not get lost here so for that they implemented two uh, what you can say alternate mechanisms here one is carrier sense collision detection and carrier sense collision avoidance collision Avoidance. So how it sends the data in a sense. So what B do is, if we want to send the data to D, what B do is, it will send some test packets here. Some test packets it will send. It is not sending the data directly here. No, it is not sending the data directly here. So it will send some test packets here to check whether is there any transmission media in that cable or not. Means the cable is busy or not, it will check. So based on that it will wait until the media becomes idle and this then it starts sending the data 
So by sending some test packets, it will check whether the tra the cable or medium is free or not. Then it starts sending the data. So what I'm trying to say here is, if B wants to send the data to D, already there is a transmission going between A and E, so the cable is busy, right? The cable is busy, so B can't send the data to D. So at the time, how the B knows the trough means the cable is idle or cable is free and cable is busy, how it knows? So for that, it use or it sends some test packets here, a dummy packets, a dummy packets and check whether the cable is busy or not. If it is busy, it will wait until the media means the cable become idle means the traffic. Right. So these techniques will effectively reduce the possibility of collision. Right. So that is how the things work. Right. So what if this cable is down? Or if your primary cable is down? Can A communicate with E? Is it possible to B communicate with D? If this backbone cable is down, is it possible to communicate? Entire network will be down here. If the primary cable is down, entire network will be down. That is what the disadvantage we have in bus topology. Right? So here, they can't communicate simultaneously. So one after the other one. And if you see, we are using the terminator. So what is the use of this terminator? What is the use of the terminator? If any signal formed in this cable, signal in the sense uh, a traffic, imagine. For example, A wants to send the data to E, example. Imagine E is down now, means maybe uh, it was shut down or something happened. It was down. So A is trying to send the data to E. So, but E is not available to receive the data, right? So what happened, it is keep on searching in this cable. It will keep on searching in this cable. So at that time, B can able to, uh, B can communicate with D. Is that possible for B to communicate with D at that time? Is that possible? Actually, no. Why? Because it is searching for the device, right? Means a traffic has been created in this cable. A traffic is created in this cable. So B can't communicate D. So how will you remove this traffic now how, or signal? We call them as a signal. It forms a signal here in this cable. So it will search for this particular device, but there won't be any response from device because it was shut down or something happened. So to remove these kind of signals, we use terminators. We use terminators on the both sides. This will identify the signals or the traffic which are not able to clear. Then these terminators will use and clear the traffic. So then B and D can communicate here. So this is how the bus topology data flows. Is that clear? How the data flows in bus topology? Everyone? Any any doubts? Clear? Everyone. Right. All right. And the main disadvantage is, as I told you, if the primary cable is down, entire network will be down here. And uh, reconfiguration is difficult. And adding the device is also difficult. Why? Because if you add devices, it will go. So carrier sense uh, media access control, what it do is, as I told you, right? So it controls the data flow. It controls the data flow. Means uh, uh, it, it avoids the avoids the collision. And it detects the collision. This is what the carrier sends media access to. Right. It will send based on the network. Two devices in the sense. See, if A wants to send the data to B, first it will take that priority. 
If C also wants to send the data to B in the sense, again, it should be wait until A and B is done. Two devices can't communicate at the same time process here to one device. Because at the time when A sends, the cable will be busy and B also busy by listening to that. So that is what I'm telling you. Can't communicate simultaneously here. So there are two alternate ways of handling the problems that occur when two nodes send the message simultaneously. That is what? Collision avoidance and collision detections. These two mechanisms will be used at the time. And then it starts sending the data one after the other. Got it? And as I told you, the disadvantage, primary cable is down. And uh, adding more devices will be also a bit difficult. You can't uh, add more than 10 devices, actually. If you do that, uh, as you know, one after the other only. So uh, to get your term, it takes time. And flow of data will be very slow. Uh, because it passes all the nodes and reads the destination. And difficult to troubleshooting because it requires a specialized test equipment to determine the cable faults. So if any fault occurs in the cable, then it would dispute the communication from or for all the nodes, right? So that is what you can see. And this is how the physical structure and the data flows in bus topology, right? And next we have same as bus, but here in a ring in adjacent sites. So here, the bus. here the devices will be connected in the adjacent sites. Got it? So this is the structure of the ring topology. So it is like bus topology, but with connected ends. But uh, I'll, I'll share the document. Actually, I have given the document for you. Right. So when it comes to the ring topology, so uh, where the data will be connected in the endpoints. So for example, type of topology, which people are field. Ah, uh, great man. Thanks for that. You can take that example also. All right. So when it comes to the ring topology, so yeah, as I told you, the devices are connected to the uh, endpoints to each other in adjacent sites, right? So the node that receives the message from a system, imagine from A system, this is A system, wants to send to the this is B, C, D, and E. So now A wants to send the data to C, D. So will it directly send the data to D? Will it happen in that way? Actually, no. So first it will send the data to B. B to C and C to D. This is how the data flows. And remember the data flows in one direction, that is unidirectional. It's in a, it's in a clockwise direction, okay? So the data flows in a single loop continuously known as endless loop. Here there is no terminated ends here. So each node is connected to another node and having no termination points. And the data flows in clockwise direction, remember that. Okay, means clockwise only. This is the clockwise direction, right? So now I want to send the data from A to D. So first it will travel to the B, B to C, C to D. And how it knows the data belongs to D only? How D is receiving the data? Whatever the data I'm sending is, is B looking for the data? Will B knows the data what I'm sending to D? Actually, no. So here they use a mechanism called tokens. So in the form of tokens they use. So they use token passing. Means in the uh, it is a network access method. So in which token is passed from one node to the another node. It is it is a kind of frame where that circulates around the network. So what this token do? So simple. Uh, it passes the data from one node to another node until it reaches the destination. So whenever a sender sends the data, the receiver will check for the token and see the address or data belongs to the system or not. So this token contains some address along with the packets, means the data. 
okay so the data is passed from one device to another device until the destination address matches so once the token is received by the destination device then it sends the acknowledgement to the sender again that it has received the data from you like that it will send the acknowledgement also so these token contain the addresses here okay so the the device the b will look for the token address and see if that address belongs to b or not if not it will forward to the next node and same c will also look for the token and see the address is belongs to that device or not if not it will forward to the d and then d also look for the address the address belongs to the it will receive the data then it gives the acknowledgement in return that is how the data flows in this network what if this cable is down imagine while sending the data uh, in between a to b the cable is down means some broken something broken there so how the data flows here anyone it does not flow so then how i can send the data now what can i do here is there any alternate replacement no chance of data flow so actually you can't reverse this same system there but actually you can use uh, a see as i told you it won't go in an anti clockwise direction right so we use a source called fddi scenario so anyone having the idea of fddi in ring topology so which is nothing but a, a fiber distributed data interface so actually this fddi contain two token rings two token rings one is primary ring another one is secondary ring so secondary ring in the sense again they use a ring inside the so whatever we are doing this is completely from primary so what this fddi do is if primary ring fails it will try to connect to the secondary rings in anti clockwise direction this is how the connection will be. means this is the primary ring imagine and in this we have a secondary ring so this is how the rings will connect so a b c d and e part so now data flows to the secondary rings and reach the destination so consider this as a, a backup cable so if primary ring fails it will go with the backup ring or backup cable you can say got it so that is what the fddi did. clear so if the primary ring fails it will go for the secondary ring if secondary ring fails yeah as someone said uh, change the topology or else replace the topology got it so as i said data will not flow in anti clock see from primary it won't flow as an anti anti clock virus but when i implement a secondary part obviously it will be interconnected in the secondary part through this point it will send that's what i'm telling i'm mentioning the fddi service which will use the secondary ring as a backup so if primary fails it use the secondary ring either it will move from here or it will move from here to the secondary ring again from secondary ring it may be any kind it may be a clockwise or anti clockwise you can configure that right so the main advantage of these topology is cost it means twisted pair cabling is inexpensive and easily available also and installation cost is also very low and it is reliable means it is more reliable network because the communication system is not dependent on the single host computer All right and uh, fault devices can be removed uh, from the network without bringing the network down that we can do right and disadvantages we have here is failure the breakdown in one station leads to the failure of overall network here as we discussed right now and delay there will be some delay why because communication is not directly uh, proportional to the number of nodes right 
So adding new devices increase the communication delay in this network. Got it? So that is how the ring topologies work. And this is how the data flows in a ring topology. Right. And next we have is, is that clear everyone? Clear? Can I go to the next topology here? Yes. So I'm going slow, right? Or still you're facing the same thing? Fine. So now we'll discuss about the start topology. So in this, uh, all the devices will connect it to a centralized source. It may be a switch or a router or a hub, maybe anything. So this is how the structure of a network will be, of a start topology. This is a physical structure of a start topology. And here you're using the centralized sources like switches, routers, or hubs. So can anyone tell me what is the difference between the routers, switches, and hubs. Hmm? Anyone? What is what is the difference? At a time, no, you can't do that at a time. You can either use one single cable or another one. There will be a one both basis, right? For the system. So in that basis, so router is a wireless internet provider. Mm -hmm. Imagine you went for an interview. How many of you guys are from IT here, like computer science, a computer related department? How many of you here? Mm -hmm. I can see there are many people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, I can see like many of you from the ID, I think so. So, you have to tell me the answer. Like, uh, if I ask you, what is a router? Explain me the router. What will be the, your answer? How is the device which is used to connect the number of devices? Router connects multiple networks. Switch is used to transfer the data within a network. Router to send the data to other network. Okay. How will distribute the data to every node in the network? Ah, uh -huh. pretty good answers. Yeah. So router is nothing but where it is an interface between two or more different networks. Two or more are different networks. Means which takes your data over the network. Which takes your the your data over the network. Okay, and when it comes to the switches, imagine this is a router and to this router, I'm connecting a switch. So where switches will have a 24 port switches or 48 port switches will be there. Okay, you can, you can see them, uh, I'll show you. Switches. the many companies you can see this is how the switches this is the cisco switch you can see can you see how many ports we have almost you can see the port numbers on the switch also this is the switch actually you know how router looks right there will be five ports here right so this is a 48 port switch as you can see and you know the routers how, how routers will work have you seen right in your home also you have routers tp link or d link or hardware like that you have the routers right so these routers will help you to take the data over the network and establish the connection between two or more different networks here okay and when it comes to the switches 
where it has a 48 port switches, like just now I have shown you, right? So 48 port switches will be there. So switches will work within the network only, remember. Okay, so imagine there is some ports. So imagine to these ports, I have connected a device. Imagine this is a 48 port switch. It's a 48 port switch. And in that one port is connected to the router. Already one port is connected to the router. How many ports will be there now? How many ports will be there? 47. So I have 47. So how many devices I can connect to this? 47 devices I can connect. What if I'm having some 100 devices at that time? What I can do? Again, I can use some extended switch here. Again, I'll take one switch. So how many ports left here? 46 ports. And how many ports left here? 47. Again, if I connect any other device, 46. So like that, you can at most connect 46 devices to a switch. And why organizations? Even if you see in your computer labs, they use switches only. Means all the devices will connect it to the cable only. As some know. Have you seen that? All the devices will be connected to the cable, Ethernet cable only. So are, are they providing Wi-Fi for you in lab? In lab, I'm asking. In labs, in your labs. Are they providing the Wi-Fi or are they providing the Ethernet cable to the devices? Hmm? Ethernet, right? So most of the times there will be Ethernet cables only. So because of to provide a constant internet, uh, sorry, data rate there. So if I use a Wi-Fi, imagine if I provide a Wi-Fi, what happened is there is a person, this person is kept for download, is downloading some movie. Okay. So at this point, this fellow will get the constant rate of data here or internet. No. Right. The network will be flexible there, right? So it won't be the constant here. So to provide a constant or stable connections, we use switches here. And remember, these switches will work within the network and it use an address called physical address. To communicate with other device, it use a address called physical address, which is nothing but your MAC address. You'll have MAC address, right, to your devices. So this switch does not have any idea. I don't have any idea on IP address. You don't have any idea about the IP address here. But when it comes to the router, it knows the IP address and it knows the MAC address too. But over the network, if we if, if router wants to communicate over the network, which address it will use, MAC address or IP address? If a router wants to send the data over the network, at that point, will it use IP address or MAC address? It use the IP address only. And remember, MAC address will work within the network only, within the network only. So imagine there are three devices are connected to the switch. So now A wants to send the data to C. What address is required for me now? And will it send the data directly from A to C here? Will it send the data to A to C here directly? What do you think? If I want to send the data from A to C and all these devices are connected to the switch, so how the data flows here? Will it directly send A to C here? Actually, no. If you see here, when a sender, and imagine he is a receiver. So where the data is first sending? To the centralized source, which is switch or router. It may be anything. And then it will transfer to the destination according to the address. So what I told you, switch will use the physical address only to communicate. So now, when I send the data from A to C, first it will go to the switch and switch to C. So how this switch is sending to this data, which address it is using here, which address it is using here, MAC address, remember. So switches won't use IP address here. It use MAC address only. So when we use IP address, when our data wants to send over the network, then I use the IP address using the router. Again, for that, you need a router. Switch can't send your data over the network, remember. Switch can be used within the network with the help of a physical address. When it comes to over the network, over the network means up to your router, after the router, Google. Then it will send the data from A to switch, switch to router. 
and router will use the IP address of A and then it sends the data. So that is how the things work here. Is that clear everyone? How the data is flowing? So when, when we use switch, it communicate using the physical address. When we use router, it use the IP address to communicate over the network. So to take your data over the network, we use routers. So routers are nothing but here. It's an interface between the two or more different networks here. And when it switch within the network. And what about hub? What happened when I use the hub? Any idea? Simple, it broadcasts the request to all the devices. So for example, uh, here, this is system A. Imagine this is B, C, and D. So A wants to send the data to C only. So first it will go to the hub and hub to C. And apart from that, it will send the data to B and D also. So they can also receive the packets here. So simply it shares and simply it's doing broadcasting here. Broadcasting. So how do broadcasting here? Got it? So that is what the difference you can see in these three devices. So now start topology is nothing but they use a centralized source. So all the devices will connect to the central source. So the data flows from uh, the central source. What if this central source is down? Central source in the sense, it may be a switch router or a hub. What if this central source is down? Entire network will be down. Entire network will be down. There won't be any communication at the time, right? So that is how the data flows in this start topology. There will be a centralized source. So if it wants to communicate, it will send the data to the central source and central source will manage and forward the data to the destination. Got it? Is that clear everyone about the start topology and the difference between the routers? So routers will communicate based on the IP address and both MAC address here. It use MAC address and here there will be no mapping means it won't use any IP address or MAC address. Simply it will broadcast to all the devices. Here. All right. So that is what the difference you can see in this router switch and hub. Clear. All right. So the main advantage we have in this start topology is uh, network control. Means uh, uh, it can be easily implemented. Uh, means the complex network control features can be easily implemented in the start topology. Means any changes made in the start topologies are automatically accommodated. Right. And limited failures. Why? Because as each station is connected to the central hub with its own cable. So a failure in one cable will not affect the entire network here. And easily expandable and high data speeds why? because it supports the bandwidth of approximate uh, 100 Mbps depends on the cable basis. Right? And efficient troubleshooting. But the main disadvantage, as I told you, the central point of failure will lead the entire network to down. Got it? So that is what the major difference you can see in the ring bus and start topology. Clear everyone, right? So next what we have, mesh topology. So what is mesh topology here? Imagine, let me take, there are four nodes. This is node one or node A and there is node B. D and C. There are four devices, imagine. So here we have two types of mesh topologies. One is partially mesh topology and fully mesh topology, which is partially mesh topology and fully mesh topology. <coughs> Partial mesh topology in the sense uh, A to B, B to C, C to D, and D to A. So now the data flows in all the way. Means uh, it, if I want to send the data from A to C, it can send from A to B and B to C, C to D and D to A. Like this, it will send the data. Okay. 
and uh, this is partialness. So what if this cable is down? Can I send the data here? Is that possible for me to send the data here? Actually, yes, it is possible. How? From A to D and D to C you can send. So there is no limitations here. It means you can send only in clockwise direction like that. No, you can send it anyway. Right. So this is how the data flows in the mesh topology. That comes to the fully mesh. Every node will have a dedicated link to each node. Now I can send the data from A to D, D to B, B to C, or A to C directly, or C to D, D to A. So we have a multiple ways to send the data here. Got my point? This is a fully mesh scenario. So mesh topology is an arrangement of a network where in which uh, computers are interconnected with each other through various redundant connections. So there are multiple parts from one computer to another computer. And it does not contain any centralized device like switch, router, or hub like that. OK. So. The best example I can give for this mesh topology is your internet. Yesterday I shown you, right? Internet connections, submarine cable. Do you remember this point? Yesterday, in introduction, we discussed. So here you can see. So is there any starting and end point? Or is there any single cable we are using here? Can you see for each node we have multiple ways. If this cable fails, it uses this cable. If this cable fails, it uses so it makes sure your connection will be active by 24 by 7. So the best example for mesh topology is you can take this uh, internet as an example, the internet connections. So the main disadvantage is cable requirements, the maintenance. So it requires huge amount of cables here. And there is a formula. For example, there are four devices. How many cables are required for these four devices? Wireless for shortest range, we use wireless, not for the long distance. Again, wireless also, again, there will be a wired connection to the router. There is not completely a wide. Eight cables are how you said. Two cables, I think. Ah. For four devices, only two cables required. So for this, we have a formula. So how many nodes we have? This is a formula which we have. So here n represents the node. N minus one is nothing but the link to each node and by two. So Four. So how much? Six cables, right? That is what the formula we have. Got it? So mesh topology is mainly used for WAN implementation via wide area network. So where communication failures are critical concern for that. So they use in WAN cases. And the advantages we have is it is reliable, means uh, uh, if any link breakdown will not affect the communication between the connected computers here. And communication is very fast between the nodes and easier reconfiguration. And the disadvantage is cost only. It requires a lot of cables and management. Efficiency, well, because redundant connections are high, that reduces the efficiency of the network also. So that is what the disadvantages, you can find it in the mesh topology, right? And the final one, which we have is hybrid. So hybrid is nothing but the combination of all the topologies. Apart from the mesh, remaining topologies will be the combination for this. So mostly you can see in the branch, from main branch to IC, uh, sub, sub branch. So like that from one enterprise to the another enterprise, they want to communicate with these dedicated connections. They use these multiple 
hybrid or multiple topologies, which we call them as a hybrid topology. Got it? So the combination of various different topologies is known as hybrid topology. And this topology is a connection between the different links and nodes to transfer the data. And two or more different topologies are combined together, is termed as hybrid topology. And it is more reliable and flexible and effective. So because it is, it can be designed according to the requirement of the organization. So remember, the setting of the topologies completely depends on the network infrastructure of the organization. So as I told you, you can design the topology according to the requirement of the organization. And IP topologies are very effective as it can design in such a way that the strength of the network is maximized and weakness of the network is minimized. And the size of the network can be easily expanded in new devices without affecting the functionality of existing network. And uh, as you know, disadvantage is costly. So costly infrastructure. So the infrastructure cost is very high as a hybrid network requires a lot of cabling network devices. And very expensive as these ups are different from the usual ups and used in the other topologies. The use hubs here. Right? So that is what the hybrid topology for you guys. Clear? And as I told you, we have a point to point also. What is that point to point topology? Anyone having any idea? Uh, uh, see, uh, I'll, I'll provide the notes for you. Don't worry. So I have made a document, complete document. Okay, so I already have given that to the team. But what happened is for entire network fundamentals, I made a single document. Uh, there it is. So I made a complete, a single document for you. So both the topologies, each topology. Okay, so and network types we discussing. So network models, next year you're going to start with some model. Okay, so everything you can find it in this top. IP addresses, MAC addresses, right? So everything I have given. So don't worry, we are going to cover all these things. Right? Yeah, I already have shared that to the team. They will then share you in the group. Okay, so for complete network fundamentals, I have shared. See, best, I, I suggest you to do research to find the content. The best source for you guys is having Google. Simply I can say that. But do a research point here. So how you need to do the research is, like, uh, for example, you took a topic related to the internet. Example, example I'm taking. So you have to go with the research, like, what is internet? What we people do is if, if I want if, if you want any any uh, any content, just just we go to the Google and if you if you want to know about that part, we'll just type internet. That's it. So what we'll see? We'll see the Wikipedia. Most of the people will go to the Wikipedia. That's it. But try to open three or four links here. Just open this link. Just open another one. Just open another one. Go for one by one. Read the content in this read the content in this and read the content in this. And you'll find a common point here. You'll find the common point on all the three links. That will be your answer. That will be your answer. You can fix for that answer. But because so many people will say that, sir, uh, I, I was a bit confused. Like uh, some people have written like this, some people have written like this. But go with multiple links. See what the content they have written. So obviously, in that basis, you'll get that. I definitely will have practical sessions. We didn't start at ethical hacking. First, you should be good in networking. And whatever we are covering in networking, you are going to see them in practical. So prepare for that. 
don't neglect these topics i am expecting some output from your end remember i think you have some projects also so remember if you are not responding or if you are not giving any answers or if you are not doing the task say it will be a bit difficult for you at the time so try to be active in the session and do more research okay and uh, as i told you don't stick for one single line first find what is the internet and why internet and how internet and when internet and who is internet so see this is how you can do a research this is what i can say as a research now you are getting all the information about the topic here so just do research in this don't go for the searching so in searching you won't get the content much do research got it so this will be a kind of a research that is what my suggestion and google is the best source for you see what i'm doing here just i'm sharing my knowledge with you people that's it just i'm sharing whatever the knowledge i'm having i'm just sharing with you that and how i got this thing again using the sources like google i learned from them for you guys how you guys are lucky actually you're getting a lot of uh, instructors or content delivery people so you're getting some sources at that time when i am doing research there is no person who teach me i am a self learned hacker i did all my research using this youtube google and all these platforms now i didn't join any institute there so i have all the resources now now the technology is grown like you have chat gpt you have ai gemini you have many sources completely ai you know just you need to know how to use them that's it just you have to learn how to use them if you know how to use them then you'll get a lot of content you learn so much of uh, bring in so much of knowledge here knowledge matters anywhere so do some research from your end also see what are the latest technologies uh, if you go for an interview the last you especially in cyber security domain if you go for a cyber security related uh, interviews the last you what is the latest uh, a cyber attack uh, that you are aware of anyone the like yesterday what attack happened what kind of uh, technology they used these kind of questions you need to prepare and before that you should aware of these network concepts and the uh, attack methodologies that we'll cover in this program definitely i'll give my best for you people but as the same time i'm expecting some output from your end also do some more research on your end gain some good knowledge here right so follow the trend what are the trends going on now ai cyber attacks or any other technologies just follow them explore them gain some knowledge from them that is what i can suggest for you correct all right so yeah just go with the research point of view right so these are the some uh, topologies which we have and apart from that we have point to point or uh, uh, tree topologies which are similar to that so point to point in the sense here they have a dedicated one so dedicated one in the sense uh, only that particular people will communicate with that so only two two devices will have that uh, connections no other person will have that activity just just it let's see here so what is the advantage of this in the sense uh, uh the communication will between the, these two devices only means they have a private network connection okay and uh, security also more why because only these two people will have connection to each other so no one in middle they can interrupt and they can they can see the data and availability is 
hundred percent, ninety nine point nine percent, the availability will be there. Right. So it is the simplest communication between the two nodes, so in which one is the sender, another is the receiver. So it has a high bandwidth. Got it. So there is what point to point topologies. A dedicated links will be there to each node. So completely you can set them as a private networks. Okay. Right. So next we'll go with a, another topic called OSI models. How many of you are aware of the OSI model? Anyone? I hope if you're IT background, you guys have definitely in networking you have this OSI model. Open system interconnection. Great. It's an open system interconnection. All right. So what is the use of this open system interconnection? What it will let you know? What is the use of this open system interconnection? An area operating system. Mm -hmm. Describe the functions of networking system. Mm -hmm. Okay. Anyone data security? Okay. Different uh, layers will be performed. Different actions to communicate. Okay, I'll I'll give an idea for you. Have you aware of these OS? Operating systems. You guys have an idea, right? Operating systems like Windows, Linux, Kali, we will use them. All right. So now, what is the use of an operating system? If I ask you, what is the use of this operating system? Why we are using this Windows, Linux, all these things? What is the use of them? Anyone? bridge between the user and internet huh? connection between the hardware and human like software high security flexibility interface between the user and the hardware user and the software user and the software okay okay oh, i'll tell you imagine this is a computer okay this is a, a computer so what is the language of a computer? Can anyone? It's zeros and ones, which is nothing but binary, right? And there is a user, okay? So what is the language of a user? Imagine default, let me take a English here, okay? So if I'm giving any input to the computer, will it able to understand that whatever I'm giving? No, right? And in the same way, when system is giving an output, will you able to understand that in zeros and ones? No. Then how you guys are communicating with each other? How these two are communicating with each other? Oh yes, it's a software using a comp compiler. To run that compiler, you need, you need a comp software basis right again to run the software you need another software called operating system so that operating system will have a architecture like kernel hardware shell applications all these things so operating system is an interface between the user and a computer what is the use of an os it's an interface between the user and a computer here so using the operating system, we guys are communicating, right? So how two systems are communicating? Imagine this is a Windows or this is a Linux. So two different operating systems we have, how they are communicating here. With the operating system, fine. They are doing that activity. What about the communication between one to another? 
and how the data translate from one system to another system. So, hmm? from one system to another system. Oh, yes, sir. So it provides a standard for different computer systems to be able to communicate with each other. That is what OS said. So it, it can be seen as a universal language for computer networking, OSI model. It is based on the concept of splitting up the communication system into seven layers. It is based on the concept of splitting up a communication system into seven layers. And each layer has their own functionality here. And it was developed by the International Organization for the Standardization in 1983. Remember, when they built this? In 1983. Or I think 84. Right. So it is a seven layer architecture. And each layer have a specific functionality to perform. And all these seven layers work collaboratively to transmit the data from one to another across the globe. That is what OSL layer 2. Is that clear, everyone? What is OSI? It's an open system interconnection. What it do? It use a seven layer structure functionality to transmit the data from one to another across the global. Right. And what are the seven layers we have? So we have application layer. Presentation layer, session layer, transport layer, network layer, data link layer and physical layer. So there are a total seven layers. And uh, as you know, OSI is just a reference model only. Remember, over this point here, it's just a reference model, not practically implemented. So the practically implemented model we call as a compressed model, which is TCP IP model, TCP IP model that has a four layers. Actually, it is to say five, but actually it's a four layers scenario. Okay. And uh, that is a practical implement, but the same, whatever the functionality is this OSI is doing, the same thing will be happened, but in a compressed phase, right? And my question for you guys is, which one is the first layer in this? Physical, physical. Lloyd, how come network man? It is in between, right? And middle long. Network allowed. Physical. Okay. User or computer? We have both are computers only. There is no user. Sensor. So you may get these kind of questions in interview. Mm, size and folder. Exactly. It's actually the communication between one device to another device, right? This concept is. Right. So obviously he is a sender and he is a receiver. 
So from sender point of view, it starts from the application layer. Example, uh, just turn off your mobile data. And can you open the WhatsApp application? Can you able to open the WhatsApp application if there is no internet in the mobile? Can you open that? Some no. We can do that, right? Imagine disconnect the network from the device and just open WhatsApp. You can open WhatsApp, right? And you can type the message I, right? And you can click on send, but the message won't send. Means from sender point, I can use the application as a first source. Imagine you are a receiver point, receiver side. So you turned off the network. Will you be able to receive the message in the WhatsApp application? You're not sending, you're receiving there. So you turned off the network in your mobile and you open the WhatsApp. Will you be able to receive the message there? No. So from sender point of view, it starts from the physical, sorry, uh, rec receiver point of view, it is physical. And from, from sender point of view, it is from application. Remember that. So from sender point of view, it starts from the application layer. From receiver point of view, it starts from the physical layer. You are not sending. Remember, you, you are opening the WhatsApp, you are typing the high message, but when you when you want to send that, it requires the internet means. Here from sender point of view, physical layer is the least one. At the end, he needs the internet to send that. But before what he need? Application, right? You got my point? For example, I open the application. Imagine this Firefox is my application. So I'm typing Gmail. So now I require the internet. Up to here, I don't need any internet. Right, means for me, internet is the least one. Right. So now I'll open the uh, I'll compose this and I'll send some data and I'll send it. Now the data will be processed and reach the receiver. Now receiver will receive the data in the physical layer and see the data in the application layer. Okay. We'll go one by one layer here. We'll see how this things works. Okay. So whenever, whenever any interviewer or any person will ask you the question, which one is the starting layer, just tell them that from sender point of view, it starts from the application layer to the physical layer. And receiver point of view, it starts from the physical layer to application layer. Got it? Clear, everyone? And we'll go with one by one layer here. Just I'll go with a brief basis. So if you're getting any doubts, please let me know. Right. So first, we'll go with the application layer. And before that, we'll take a scenario here. Like my scenario is, this is my device A. OK. And I'm sending A a mail. So in this mail, I have composed a data called hello. So I'm just saying hello. And now I'm sending this message. So to do this activity means to compose the mail and to send to type hello and to send that. What am I requiring here? What am I require here? What I need to do this thing? First, I need a system. In that system, first, I need an application. So that's how you're starting with application layer. First, you need a application layer. So, okay, I'm having the application. So now Firefox is my application. So now what I need to do in this application? What I need to do in this application? What is my agenda? What I need to do here? I need to send a mail, right? Some guys are you able to follow me. Now I want to send a mail from my system. For that, what I require first, I need an application like a browser. And in the I'm typing Gmail. Okay. So when I type this Gmail, what it is doing? It is using a protocol called HTTPS. And when I click on google.com, again, it is using a protocol called HTTPS. Means 
to do any activity, it requires the protocols here. So how many of you guys are aware of the protocols and port numbers? Protocols and port numbers. How many of you guys are aware of this? What is protocol and what is port number? And how many protocols we have or how many port numbers we have? What is protocol in general? Yes, I'm audible to you. So protocol is nothing but set of rules, rules to be followed, right? And here we have some uh, important protocols like uh, TCP, UDP, communication protocols, and services like FTP, SSH, Telnet, HTTP, HTTPS, SMTP, IMAP, POP3, like that. So here we have ports. Ports are nothing but the virtual points where network connection starts and end. So ports are software based and managed by the computer's operating system here. And each port associated with a specific process or a service called protocols. Each port is associated with a specific processes or services called protocols here. So ports allow computers to easily differentiate between the different kinds of traffic. Easily, they can differentiate the traffic here. Okay. So when I use web, web pages, it use mostly HTTP or HTTPS. So means easily I can say it's a web service basis. And if I'm sending in the mail, it uses a services, a protocol like SMDP. Now I can say there is email process. So like that, I can easily differentiate the kinds of traffic what it is sending, right? So total we have 65,535 ports we have. In that, 0 to 1023, we call them as a well-known port numbers. Means they are allocated to the services. They are allocated to the some specific processes or services like FTP. It is running on a port 20 and 21. Means whenever you see any data in backend, like 21 port is open, then you can say it's FTP services running. Same, now you have seen HTTP, right? What HTTP do? do? Actually, can anyone tell me what is this HTTPS do? What it is doing here? Data encryption, that's it. Transfer the data, accessing the URL. See, whatever I'm requested, whatever I am requested, like Gmail, I'm requesting, right? So these requests will be taken in a get, means it will take the HTTP request to the server and get me the response. So request and response process will be done by the HTTP or HTTPS. And difference between the HTTP and HTTPS is secure. So in HTTP, it sends the data in plain text. In HTTPS, your data will be sent in encryption, which is running on port 443. So when you go for an interview, they'll ask you, most of the interviewers will ask you this question, like what service is running on port 53? Or what service is running on port uh, 22? SSH, 53 DNS. Means you should aware of these protocols along with their port numbers. So I'm giving some of the important protocols, just note down everyone. So FTP, HTTP, HTTPS, DNS, SSH, Telnet, well, because you can't go with 1023, right? Will you be able to remember all the 1023 with the functionalities? Is that possible for you guys? Or will you be able to remember all the 65,535 ports? What they do? Hmm? Will you be able to remember them? A bit difficult, right? So that is why I'm giving some important and prior protocols for you. Try to try to do research on the protocols. Take them. See, I'm, I'm not telling neglect them. No, you need to go with all the protocols. But these are the priority protocols which we use in our regular life. These services. You'll send the mails, right? You'll send the mails, right? What protocol it is using? SMTP. 
is running on port 25. You will receive the mail. Only see SMTP, which is simple mail transfer protocol, will only send the mail. It is used to send the mail only. Okay. To receive the mail again, IMAP or POP3 we use. Right. And again, uh, you are getting the time right here. The time is synchronized to your device. And servers also will synchronize with the time. So network time protocol. And you're getting the IP address to your device, right? DHCP. DHCP, which is 67 and 68 port is running. And uh, DNS we have written. SNMP, which is simple network management protocol. SMB protocol. NetBIOS, RTP, or login, BGP, Water Gateway Protocol. LDAP, right, Lightweight Act, Active uh, Lightweight Director Access Protocol. So these are the some important protocols. These are the very, very, very important protocols. So try to go with each and every protocol with the functionality I'm saying, with functionality. Why? Because in future, we are going to perform some attacks. In practical, we are doing some scanning. So at that time, for example, some ports are open. In this SMB port is open, FTP port is open, HTTP port is open, and uh, Imagine SMTP port is open and your target is Windows system. Means you, you need to scan the Windows system. So when you scan that Windows system, you got these ports are open. They are in open, means you can access them. So in this, which port will help you to connect with that Windows system? Which port will help you to remotely connect with that system? In this four. Anyone? Did I mention any TCP there? TCP and UDP are communication protocols. They're different. So HTTP will give the access. See, HTTP will work for the website, right? Here my target is Windows system, Windows 7. Is Windows 7 is a website? Hmm? No, right? So we won't use HTTP. Even my Windows 7 is not SMTP server. It's not a mail. It's not a mail server there. So even if it is not using any FTP service, what is remaining? SMB means if you know the functionalities, then only you can able to perform that attack. You're getting my point? How important the protocols are? Is that clear, everyone? So just note down these important protocols which I have mentioned. Take them as a priority. Do some research. Research. I'm telling you to do research on that. Means what is this port and why we need to use this port? What is the functionality? How it works? Like everything. Just go through that. Everyone. Right. So you can't go with this 65,500. So that's why I'm giving some important priority one. And apart from that, you can go with the remaining if you have time. Okay. So remember, they'll ask you the port numbers in interviews or services in interviews. So be ready for the answers. Got it? Right? So it's very important to learn about the protocols and port numbers here. Okay? So actually total we have 65,535 ports. In this we are going with 10, 23 well-known port numbers. Means for these services they are allocated. And remaining from 1024 to 49151 is for the registration purpose. Means if you build any application, for that if you need any port number, you can register for them. And remaining 491522, 65,500 and 35 are the unknown port numbers or dynamic port numbers, you can say. So, so dynamically, it will assign the port numbers for your connections whenever you want. So that is what you can see in the port numbers. These are all the port numbers which we have, 65,500. Got it? Clear, everyone? So just go through this. So now, 
why I'm telling about these protocols and port numbers in this application layer is so these application layer will use the services like HTTPS, SMTP, SSH, Telnet, all these services they use and they'll process the data here. So when I want a Gmail, so if when I click on the Gmail, it is using the protocol, right? Yes or no? Means to process the data in this application layer, it use protocols here. Got it? Is that clear? And now I am composing the mail. I am typing the mail. And I'm giving some subject. And my message is my data is hello. This is my data, which is hello. Now I'll click on send, right? So what happened when I click on send? Message sent. Can you see this? Message sent. You got an acknowledgement. So what happened? Now Obviously, the receiver received the message at the other end. Obviously, we'll receive the message. But what happened in between? How the message was processed? Everything you need to know. So, in application layer, it's an user interface layer. It's a user interface layer. And we call this as a lower layer or a, a desktop layer. And the main function of application layer is file transfer access and management means these applications allows user to access the files in a remote host and retrieve the files in the remote host and manage or control the files from a remote host and it provides the email services and uh, it provides the distributed data source services or databases services and access from global information about various objects and services all these things you can do so that is why we call this layer as a user interface layer why? because I can able to access the application. I can able to compose the data and I can send the data. And to do all this process, it is using the protocols like as HTTPS and now by to send the mail, it use SMTP protocol again. Got it. So this is how the application layer works. So we compose the mail and we have sent and what is our data here? What is our data in application layer? So to process the data, it uses some services called protocols. So what protocols it is using? Example, it is using FTP, HTTP, SMTP, all these protocols, the many protocols. And uh, the main responsibility of this layer is file, transfer, access, and management. Access and management. And here the data will be represented as data only the data will be represented as data only got it so this is what we are doing in the application layer. just i have shown in practical i'm using an application i'm requesting for a service and i'm composing and i'm sending the data now where the data will be sent now where it will be sent it will be sent to the presentation layer right so what happening in presentation layer this is what you compose the data and you are sent and now the data will be sent to the presentation layer and this layer is also known as translation layer translation layer so the data from the application layer is extracted here and manipulated as per the required format to transmit over the network. Yes, it will translate the data according to the receiver point. According to the receiver point, it will translate the data. And the functions of these, means it add three functions to the data. It will add three functions to the data. In presentation layer, what is the three functions? First is Translation. Translation in the sense, uh, 
from ascii to binary or binary to decimal or decimal to the uh, unicode whatever means according to the receiver point it will transfer that's what we call this layer as a translation layer so whatever the data you're receiving from the application will be translated or extracted here and manipulated as per the required format where to transport this to the receiver right so that is what the translation do so converting the data according to the receiver point and next is encryption so what is encryption here anyone it will encrypt the data here why before that what is encryption converting the plain text to cipher text means for example my data is hello it will be converted to something which is unreadable format right so this is what encryption and this encryption will happen in the center point of your only again from the receiver point the cipher text will be converted into plain text that is what we call as a decryption that will be happen on the sender side oh, sorry receiver side that will be happen in the receiver side and what is the intention to do the encryption is security securing the data cyber threats all right and next compression so what is this compression why it is compressing the data here reduce the bit size so what happened when it reduces the trans uh, data the transmission will be fast here okay so it reduces the number of bits that need to be transmitted to the network on the network for it so that is what the compression so these three functions are adding to the presentation layer way to compress encrypt and translate the data to the receiver once it done from this presentation layer it will move on to the session layer and remember in data link layer also the data will be represented as data only hello is hello only okay same when it comes to the session layer the main responsibility of session layer is session management session management so means uh, it will try to establish the session and uh, maintaining the session and terminating the session so this is what session management so the main responsibility of this session layer is establishment of the session maintenance of the session and termination of the session okay and apart from that it add another function called authentication so what is authentication here anyone authentication verification check whether the person who connected and taking the data is a valid person or not to authenticate it will go with the verification signature and what another thing it will do is it will provide the synchronization to the data synchronization to the data so what is the synchronization do adding the checkpoints to the data checkpoints to the data so what is the use of by adding the checkpoints to the data anyone what is the advantage adding the checkpoints to the data here what happened guys is the session getting boring for you bore varutunda hmm to bash ke bore varu directly go to the particular stage okay. hmm as such too long huh? so you know the duration right it's from 3 to 5 The session duration is. Mm -hmm. 
then how so very important actually voice cell layers are very very important i think some of them are left from the session also it's very important for you voice cell layers fine we'll go with the session layer and we'll see that so what is the use of adding the checkpoints to the data here yeah i'll stop it after session layer so what is the use of this session layer here so checkpoints by adding the checkpoints what we can do is for example imagine my data is 100 mb example so from 1 to 10 i added one checkpoint 10 to 20 is another checkpoint so for every 10 mb i'm adding a checkpoint here imagine the receiver received only data up to 32 mb means where exactly the error occur here in this at this point so now for session layer, this incarnation, what it do is, it will start sending the data from here, not from the beginning. It is easy to find where the error occur, and it, it will start retransmitting the data from there itself. So this layer allows a process to add the checkpoints that are considered as a synchronization points in the data. And these synchronization points help to identify the errors so that the data is resynchronized properly and ends the message without any data loss. So by adding the check checkpoints, it is easy to avoid avoid data loss. So to avoid the data loss, we are using the synchronization mechanism in the session layer to the data. And then we'll go for the dialog control. This is another function which we use in this session layer which is dialog control. So what is dialog control here? So it allows the systems, this allows the two systems to communicate either in half duplex or full duplex means it use transmission modes, transmission modes, uh, you know, simplex, how many of you know about the simplex, half duplex and full duplex. How many of you are aware of these three? We call them as a transmission modes. Anyone? Simplex in the sense one way communication means there is A to B. There won't be any response again back. Example, you can take uh, uh, your TV remote, right? Keyboards, mouse, all these are the one way functions, which is simplex format. And when it is off duplex, first it will send the data from A to B. Once it's completion of sending, then it gives the response. Means one after the other, not simultaneously. Example, your walkie-talkies. We can't communicate simultaneously in walkie-talk. You know that one after the other only. That is what? Half duplex. And when it comes to the full duplex, simultaneously we can communicate. Like two-way communication. Like your WhatsApp calls. Uh, like now, now presently we are in two-way communication, which is in full duplex only. So these dialog control will help the data, or uh, uh, sorry, it helps the systems to communicate either in half duplex or full duplex. That is what the dialog control do. And in this layer also, the data will be represented as data only. Okay. So what happening in application layer? We are using the applications and some protocols. We are processing the data. And the data is forwarded to the presentation layer where the presentation layer is translating, encrypting, and compressing the data. And from there, the data will be forwarded to the session layer where it is adding the checkpoints to the data to avoid the data loss. And apart from that, it is establishing the session, maintaining the session and terminating the session with the receiver point. And it is also implementing some authentication to check whether the person is genuine or not while establishing the session. And then it is saying to the system, so either to communicate either in full duplex or half duplex. So in these three layers, the data is representing as data only. And what is our data here? Hello. Remember. And these three are the top three layers. We call them as a software layers. OK, so these three layers are the
whatever you've seen up to here, these three layers are the software layers, and these three layers are the hardware layers. And this layer is a core layer of OSM model, or you can say heart of OSM model. Okay. Clear? So uh, today we'll stop it for here. So up to here, we completed. So in next session, we'll go with the remaining layers. And remember, they are very important. Complete OSM model is very, very, very important. It plays a major role for you to understand the attacks and even defensive strategies and even the data flow. So without having the OSI knowledge, it's a bit difficult for you to understand these transmission things. Got it? So try to try to attend the next session. So make sure before coming to the session, take the task, everyone. So the task for you guys is protocols and port numbers, everyone. So I have given some important protocols, right? So just go with that protocols and port numbers. See what is protocol and see what is port and what is port number. Then go for that important protocols. And just go with the OSA model once again. This is your task for the next session. I'm expressing, uh, I'm expecting some documentation from your end. So make sure do some assignments, do some documents. I'll show you how my students will do the task. See, see, see. So these are all the tasks what they done till now. So I think uh, so this is how they made the see how they did the task like how this protocol will work. Uh, what is this protocol to the futures? How to connect this with the protocol? How the establishment of SSH connection? See. Means they just went through in detail of each and every protocol and they learned about the functionality. And they only did the task. You can see it's a task. Okay. So the same thing I'm giving for you. So everyone just go through that. There is another guy, this fellow. See how he did research in detail about each and every protocol. So the protocol, full name, port number, working functionality, prevention methods, attack view, protocol in use, how this protocol, command to access this protocol, how to enable this protocol in this OS operating systems. <laughs> so everything, in which layer this protocol will work. Again, sometimes they'll ask you in interviews, sir, what protocol we use in this layer, what protocol we use in this layer, like that they'll ask you. So prepare for that one also. I think this guy did that task. So he see all the protocols he did, most of the protocols, and he even he did what protocols we use in each layer of OS model. And what are the network vulnerabilities we have in each layer? See, in this ethical hacking or in the cybersecurity, uh, they'll interlink with the OSA model and they'll talk. Sometimes when you perform an attack, they'll ask you, in which layer of OSA model you see this attack? So like that, they raise a the questions for you. So prepare well for that. Got it? So if you're facing any issues, please let me know in the session. We'll discuss on that part. Okay. I hope you learned something from this class. Right? So if you're facing any issues, please let me know. I hope the topics are clear for you, right? Whatever we discussed till now. Right. So if anyone having any doubts, yeah, you guys can ask me. Uh, actually, I'm not in group. Team is there. So I have already shared the document with them. You can, they'll share you. So make sure, uh, I, I, I'll tell you, just go with the Google. You'll get everything, man. Whatever the topics we are discussing, you'll find them in Google. It's just suggestion I'm saying. Though I have given notes, just get them. For every model, after starting with ethical hacking also, whatever the models we are discussing, for every model, I'll share the document. Don't worry. Okay.
I'll share that. So till now, we completed the three layers. So remaining layers will complete it in the next session. So thank you. Thank you for everyone for joining the session. Have a great day. See you next time. And everyone try to fill the form. Okay, just go with the feedback. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Attendance, uh, I don't have an idea. I'll have about the team. Yeah, thank you, Sujit. Wanted to know actual end to end content that is already delivered, right? Karthik, I have given that in the first session. Though in next session, I'll let you know what we are going to learn.